in episode 29, we speak to Pete Mesley all the way over in New Zealand. Pete is an explorer, an adventurer, and diving pioneer. We chat about his lust for rust and his love of photography and how he's combined both of these passions to create some amazing 3D models of the wrecks of Truck Lagoon. He shows us some of these amazing 3D models and we speak to him about his time on the Avatar film set, which was filmed over in New Zealand. So sit back, relax, grab yourself a coffee and enjoy. If you go into here, then you will actually go into this area here. And this is the helm station. Look at this, the double helm. Now, come on. You, you, can't, crazy. you can't not be impressed by that. That is... That is super cool. So okay. you got your eyes, Pete. I've got like a little, a little Mustang Sally. So this is, I like you know, I'm, I'm a, I'm, I'm a peanut man through and through, but um. But um, like it just doesn't touch size anymore. So I, um, I've had to resort to uh, to su supporting the Australians, and, and um, we make world class Pinot and 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 and, uh, and uh, Sauvignon Blanc. But um, but the Aussies, um, the Aussies know how to make a Shiraz, mate. So um, so I'm uh, supporting the Barossa Valley this 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 weekend and uh, all weekends. <clears throat> We'll just clarify for us. It's seven o'clock in the morning, and I've got a, a really strong black coffee. Um, for you being in New Zealand, it's eight o'clock at night, so you can have your Shiraz. You're not drinking Shiraz at seven o'clock in the morning. <laughs> no, <clears throat> it's been done a few times, obviously, uh, when, when uh, back in the days when we used to travel. And uh, I, I, I remember, uh, you know, like, I don't know where I'd be. I'd be in some airport somewhere, and, and um, I, I, I would look at my watch. I've never, ever changed my watch um, from New Zealand time. I just, I, I just don't know why. I just never would. And then I'd go... Oh man, it's so like four thirty in the morning, and, then, and I was like, "Oh, good evening, sir. Would you? Uh, what would you like for dinner?" I'm going, "Ah, oh, sweet. Oh shit, man. I'll have a, uh, I'll have a porterhouse and a, a cheeky churros, you know." And uh, and then, uh, but yeah, I just, I just can't do that. Like, like morning time when it's when it's morning time, I, you know, maybe Christmas time with a with with some some champagne or something, but. Uh, but anyway, anyway. Listen, as long as you don't start cleaning your teeth with it, you're fine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I, I haven't quite got there yet, you know. And, and uh, last year, um, you know, because obviously, like, oh, man, all, all, all fair juice to you guys, you know. You, you're still in lockdown, aren't you? Yeah, we are, yeah. And complete lockdown. Long. Can't do anything or go anywhere. Mate, I'll tell you what. Um, you know, we, we, we did, um, you know, Ten to life last year from March to, to you know I, I think I've got it on my calendar still it was uh, the first day of quarantine was um, was the twenty uh, fifth of March and we we did uh, four weeks and then uh, we had a few cases and then we back to we went, we we did another four weeks and we were all like mother <laughs> you know and um. And I tell you what, mate, it just it just works, eh? And um, and we, you know, like <clears throat> it's it's really it's really hard because, you know, we we we're, we're out like you go out here and it's like any normal day, right? Um, we're on level one, so um, people just they got to quarantine when they come in the country. We, you know, they're catching all the you know all these guys with COVID and, and quarantine them all the rest of it. But but we're very very lucky, and I. You know, I, I thank my lucky stars. We we'll we'll move into level two, which is like um, can't do shit. But you're not like level three and level four is like DEFCON one. You know, you yeah. you're gonna you know we're all gonna die and all the rest. <laughs> of the other. So, to be honest, I, I'm not even sure what level we're at now. We have so many different tiers. I think we're on something like tier seventeen where we are. I, I really don't know, and and that just means you can't do anything. But New Zealand, to, I mean, to to your credit, uh, your government's credit, not you personally, Pete, the way it was handled right from the start with locking down the country and, you know, you, it's not a fluke that you've not got it. And, you know, the, if, if other countries, we're an island, we could have done what you did and be in the same position as you. 
Um, and unfortunately, we didn't. And, and we're still allowing people to, to fly in. <laughs> to be fair, there is only 12 people live in New Zealand. That's true. <laughs> 15, including me. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, no, you're right, mate. And, and um, But um, just having a look at what the world is doing, um, I think everyone is just trying to... like. It, like we're just trying to f figure it out, and 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 when you look at at, at the, what the world was do doing, and then like you know like you know um, you guys are doing like like a, let's get into herd immunity straight away, and and then like all of these are, were plausible, were, were, were all plausible stuff, and then suddenly like you know let's let's talk thousands and thousands and thousands of people carking it, then everyone's going, oh no, stuff that, and they go, oh no, no, it's only two percent, and then the guy goes. Well, I don't want my mum or my dad to be that two percent. So let's let's figure things out, and and um and it's a lot, you know, and and, and we're just man, we we're all just learning, aren't we? And and we all we're just trying to do is the best that we can, and you know, like this year is gonna like nothing's gonna happen this year, mate. You know, we, we're gonna we're gonna we're like uh, like are your vaccines have been rolling out, haven't they? They have been. I don't think they're they're sort of as high as they should be, um, you know, but they'll all get done. They reckon everyone will be done by the summer. Um, whether they actually are, I don't know, but um, Craig's over 70, so he's got his. <laughs> Congratulations, mate. Are you, are you fair income 70 years old? No. <laughs> I was going to say, man, far out. Life's been good to you, if that's the case, I'll tell you. You know, like, I, I had my 38th birthday, like, yeah. <laughs> so, so where are you guys in the country? Are you are you close to each other, or where are you? Yeah, we're relatively close. We're in Norfolk, so um, oh, Craig's right on the coast in Norfolk, and I'm just outside Norwich. Which so we're about sort of 25, 30 miles apart, but right. um, yeah, pretty close um, for when, for when we can go diving and do stuff. And yeah, it's not too far, but at the moment it seems like a million miles away. I was going to say, I mean, it, it, we're not far away. We could be 300 miles away. We, you know, we only ever see each other on Zoom this year and, uh, you know, in, in StreamYard. And, you know, we might as well be in, in opposite continents. It's ridiculous. Yeah, man. You, you, you're so right, man. And, uh, and like, if you, you guys got kids. And, um, you know, my kids thought last year was the best thing ever. <laughs> like, what the hell? Everyone's going like 2020. Let's nip this, let's nip this in the butt. And my kids are going, no man, this is this is awesome. This is like this is like a month in bed. This is brilliant. Yeah, I bet they're bored now. <laughs> yeah. Are you, are they back to school. How old are your kids? Are they school age? Ah, uh, yeah. So my youngest girl is um, uh, 15, and um, my oldest girl uh, Hannah is just finished her first year at uni. Yet. You know, so and and your your kids are they are they? Uh, Mine have grown up and left home, but to, so your kids back at school now. Everything's open as normal. Everything is like everything is is like level one. I don't, level one means nothing, but but like um, on public buses you got to wear masks, and um, and apart from that, you know, everyone just like coughs in each other's faces and like. <laughs> but I do that to get people away from me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> despite what's happening and, and it's been on the news that there's a there is a pandemic and there's a virus about and i don't think some people have seen it so when they come really close to me i just go <coughs> <laughs> yeah they mm. soon move all right man so so hey listen so look, look okay so was that it that was the end oh that's awesome yeah, that's I... thanks for joining us babe. yeah it was my pleasure Maybe next time we can talk a bit about diving instead of this virus. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. No I'm going to talk about the virus. I'll just do a, a, I say a brief introduction. There's quite a lot in your introduction. Do you happen to have a pillow there? Yeah. Because you might need it for this intro. You might. <laughs> I'm sitting on it. If you if you need to nip out, if you come back uh, in about 15 uh, minutes, uh, you'll be done with the intro. Uh, don't worry, don't worry about that shit, mate. We just let's just let's just shoot the breeze, you know. Sounds good, mate. Yeah, sounds good. All good, sound wise. Yeah, sound, sound check. Awesome. <laughs> sounds good. Do I sound alright? Because I've been having microphone issues. Yeah.
Yeah, no, yeah. Like, oh, I'm good. Like, that's the biggest thing. You know, like uh, the guys on the, uh, I listened to a few podcasts and the, the sound's just terrible, you know. So, uh, you know, and, and, and um, just as long as I don't have subtitles below me. You know, <laughs> <laughs> welcome pete mesley thank you so much for joining us um i mean we've been trying to get together for quite a while now haven't we and uh to finally get to do it and to chat with you is is i've been really looking forward to it i know craig has too so for those people out there that don't know who you are uh been living under a rock you are obviously an experienced tech diver diving instructor an explorer adventurer pioneer you've got a lust for rust and you, you've dived in some of the most incredible places in the world some of the places that are on everyone's bucket list like bikini atoll galapagos truck lagoon solomon mm -hmm. islands everywhere you're an accomplished photographer and videographer and you've been heavily involved in the 3d imaging of um places like truck lagoon for project baseline and hopefully you've got some images to show us. You've obviously also been recently involved in the latest um, Avatar movie in New Zealand, where you live. So, you know, yeah. I mean, there's a lot there to discuss, isn't there? There's a lot that, that you've done um, that is really, really interesting. Um, but what about sort of little Pete, Pete Jr.? Where did it all start for you? Because I'm assuming that you were raised, born and raised by dolphins. Well, I was actually like, um, uh, obviously, hence the accent. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm actually from Zimbabwe, so, so I uh, was born and bred in a landlocked country. So, um, I only saw the ocean uh, for the first time when I was probably maybe like eleven or twelve years old. And um, when we went down to uh, um, the South Africa on the uh, on the east coast, down in a place called Durban, and um, you know, we went for our first family holiday down there, and uh, and then. Um, you know, it 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 was uh, many years later until um, I you know I, I basically uh, moved over to to the UK, um, London of all places, and and uh, and um, and that's where I learned to dive. Uh, and I cut my teeth um, in um, the south of Cornwall and and Devon, Exeter, you know, Plymouth, all the rest of so places where your probably your local stomping grounds are. And um, that you know that that's where I where I learned to dive, and uh, I think it's back in 1989. I think it was. So uh, I think Craig, you were like four, weren't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, something like that. Thank you for that, Pete. So so when you started diving, was Rex the first immediate appeal, or did that develop afterwards? Um, Craig, you know, like obviously, uh, you know, you know, I'm all preaching to the converted here. So you know, like. Um, Learning to dive in in, um, in 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 England, like my first open water dives, I was I was in like Stony Cove, January. Yeah. So uh, we, we all know the places, right? And and um and I actually um you know the water was four degrees centigrade, you know, and um and um you know obviously we all know that that's the recommended temperature for drinking Budweiser, and and we're all we're all in um our seven more wetsuits and and um. That, uh, in, in fact, you know, some people have coined the word semi-dry, and and I actually want to, I, I want to, you know, give this guy, a, 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 whoever tried to coin that phrase, there's no such thing as semi-dry. It's either wet or it's dry. What's and, that all about? Yeah, 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 exactly. So, so um, I I froze my jahungas off, um, as what we all do, and. But the thing is, I, I didn't care, you know. I, I, I actually, you know, it's swimming through that fuselage, which I'm sure all of us have done. And that was, at that precise moment, I thought, this is the coolest thing ever. Uh, and and um, I had to, 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 to build up towards the vanguard <laughs> <laughs> on the other side of the lake. And, um, yeah, man, and uh, I think it was... Um, I think it was dive number nine or ten where um, where I, I really sort of like um, it, you know it really started to gel in and and um, and we you know I, I got um, uh, called into I was the boss the bum on seat you know uh, for for one of these trips and and uh, my instructor at the time said oh you want to come diving um, down in the, down in Cornwall for the weekend I said yeah man this this sounds awesome and. Um, 
So we went down there as per usual on a on a, a, um, a fishing boat. I was heaving my guts out all the way out, and, and um, you know the three meter seas, and 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 um, and I, I turn around. I'm getting geared up. I'm I'm really nervous about about the dive, and I um, I turn around, and all I see is is my instructor's fins going over the side, uh, you know, into the water. And I went, oh my goodness, I'm, I'm, you know, and I was, I was absolutely all over the place. And the skipper, bless his heart, you know, he looked at me. He goes, look, just don't worry about it. I was the last guy on the boat, and, and he goes, look, I'll make another run round, you know. And and so I went to, um, I, I got all geared up, and and and, and th that fishing boat at the time didn't have a, like a giant sort of entry platform off, off off the side. It was basically you would stand up on a, on a fish bin, and you would do a backward roll into the water. And um, so I'm sitting there, absolutely nervous as hell. And I'm, I'm, I'm just about to get in the water, you know, like this is what you do on your course. You put your mask, you know, you, you, you hand your mask and you're just about to go over and he goes, stop. <laughs> and I'm going, what? He goes, put your fins on, you idiot. <laughs> so I put my fins on and I, um, and I, um, I basically, you know, I go over the side, backward roll into the water and I'm swimming down this, the shot line. And um, at that point, as I'm swimming down the shot line, my whole mouth fills with vomit. No. Yeah. Right, and I'm, I'm thinking, and I sit there, and I just sit bolt up right on the line, and I swallow the lot, you know. Oh, <laughs> man. And my mask filled up, and it wasn't water. It was tears. And I'm like, oh, no. And I was basically, I got to the wreck, and, and, and my instructor was going, listen, man, I've had to wait for you for a while here, you know, like, you know, so I went, you know, and, and I carried on, but, but again, I didn't care, you know, like I, I really just didn't care. Like I was in amongst it. I was, I was around Rex and, and, um, and of course, um, you know, as time would go by, um, you know, like all you'd hear on the Rex would ding, 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 and guys grabbing some spurge and, and I was never really any good at that. So, so that's, that's hence why I got into photography because, uh, you know, like at least if I carried a camera, then, then I, I would come back to the boat and the guys go, what'd you get? I go, uh, 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 I didn't get anything, you know, but if I had a camera, I go, oh, I took some photos, you know? So, <laughs> so I was absolutely terrible at, uh, at uh, collecting spits, you know? How did you make the transition from, you know, a recreational diver throwing up in his, in his regulator and, and crying in his mask to <laughs> deep diving on a rebreather? How, you know, what made you at that point just sort of, Say, do you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna push myself even further. Oh man, I've like it's just it's kind of the people that you're with, you know, and and um so so um you know we were all diving like my pinnacle dive in my life in my world was the Margraf, and that was like forty six meters, <laughs> you know, and um. And it was like, oh, my goodness. And it was like we had a, you know, that was the big scary monster dive of the world and all the rest of it. And and I thought, oh, you know, like this, you know, and then the other guys started getting into it and, and all the rest of it. And then that's when I, I, I left the UK and and, um, and and like at that time I'd actually met my wife. Oh, she wasn't my wife then, but um, and and um, a Kiwi girl. And um, she was over from New Zealand on a, on a OE and, and, um, um, and um, we'd been going up for a, for, a, for a period of time. And I said, look, listen, um, if you want to see me on weekends, you've got to learn to dive, you know. Because um, <laughs> anyway, so so she kind of like dived on the grenade there and, and uh, ended up actually enjoying it. And uh, But um, anyway, like, long story short is that we ended up going back to New Zealand. And um, after a, 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 a fair amount of stints, like, I, you know, I worked in South Africa um, off, uh, off the east coast, a place called Sodawana Bay, and we were getting chased by um, um, uh, tiger sharks and all the rest of it there every day. It was it was awesome fun. And um, so we kind of ran out of money, and, and um, my brother got married, and, and I, went to go, uh, I, I went to his wedding in Zimbabwe, and then we went over to Aussie, and then... Um, and I thought, because in my mind, I thought, oh, Aussie's the place, man. Like, Aussie is is the, the but, but, um, so, so I, I went up to, we went up to Cairns and, and, um, and, um, and then, oh, some of the most disappointing diving I've ever done in my life, mate. It was just absolutely terrible. I, uh, uh, you know, I thought, oh, this is the great, the great barrier reef. This is incredible. This is amazing. So we go out with this dive operator and, and, and like, 
I'll, I'll, I'll tell the story, but uh, like I'll, I'll explain a little bit further. But so, like um, the um, each operator gets a certain allocation of of uh, moorings, and so basically, the government is pretty clever because they go, listen, you guys can destroy that that those those four or six moorings, and the rest of the, the barrier reef is is going to be left pristine. But I didn't know that, so so I'm thinking, man, we are on the barrier reef, we are there, we are just like wow, and I get in the water. And it was just, <laughs> it, was, it was terrible, mate. Like, honestly, I've had better times as Stony then. I'm going to say, Pete, it's, it's high praise for, for Martin at Stony Cove, knowing that you had a fantastic dive there, but a disappointing dive on the Great Barrier Reef. Yeah, and, and we, you know, we, we build up our expectations like Stony, yeah, okay, well, look, you get what you get. Yeah, we know what it is. Yeah, yeah, we know what it is. But, um, but anyway, so, um, we ended up coming to New Zealand in, in uh, 1994, and I, like Kim goes, you know, my, my wife, um, so he goes, look, you, you want to come to New Zealand? So I said, ah, oh, yeah, we'll give it a go, you know, and and, and um, obviously, you know, um, you know, I've been really, really lucky, you know, here, and, um, you know, when I first turned up here, I, you know, um, I, I walked into to, to the local dive shop um, where I was living, and, you um, and the guy says, um, I said, look, um, I'm an instructor. I'm looking for work. And he says, well, in actual fact, the guy that passed you on the door on, on the way in was my training manager. <clears throat> when can you start? <laughs> so, so, um, so I've been extremely lucky. And, and, um, and, and, and in New Zealand, like, you know, it's a very, very immature market at that time. And no one knew what a DIN regulator was, you know. Yeah. Yeah. There was no such thing as a DIN valve. What the hell is a DIN valve? So, so we had to kind of, you know, <clears throat> fight up through the ranks and, and, and all the rest of it. But, but, um, but in answering your question, I, I still can't call you Fridge. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, please do. As our friendship grows, I'm sure, I'm sure we will. Um, I'm sure we will. But you're based in, in Auckland, yeah? that's correct, Pete. Yeah. So, for, for those that don't know, New Zealand is two islands, north and south, and Auckland is north on the North Island. What, yeah. what diving like specifically around where you're based now? And before you answer that, you've been out of the UK for a long time now. You probably don't know that Stony is now heated. I'm coming back. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Uh, um, so, 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 yeah. That, so, so, New Zealand, mate. Like, we're 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 a little, you know, a little part of the world um, in the bottom right hand corner of the planet. No one knows where we are. You know, Lord of the Rings, Middle Earth, bloody bloody. Okay. Blood. Um, and um, but the diving here is is world class. You know, like we we come into like a a um, like a temperate. Like we're a little bit better than the UK, a little bit better temperature wise. So, so like now at the moment we're like this is our summer. So your winter, uh, no, it's your summer. No, no, we're winter. Your summer. What? Oh yeah, no, your winter. Okay, okay, okay. So I'm getting confused. So, so like our summer. So, so the water temperature is like 18 to 20 degrees C up north, um, and then you go below like 40 or 50 meters, and you get down to like 16 degrees. So it's awesome. The visibility is between uh, everything ranges, but but between like you know um, uh, five meters to forty meters. It, it it really is. Are you diving in a semi dry? <laughs> you know what? They just a yellow card. No, 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 no. We're all diving in dry suits, but but again, it's it's quite easy wetsuit wet, wet weather and and all all the, all the, the guys coming through the ranks. So you know, uh, learning in wetsuits and then they, they, they progress onto dry suits. The usual sort of stuff. But but man, we we've got some absolutely beautiful stuff, like all subtropical um, temperate stuff. So um, if you want a little geography lesson, like we got we got the East Australian current that comes down and it just like mix the top of the eastern side of New Zealand, and and we've got a place called the Poor Nights Islands, and um, and it's um, it's incredible, mate. It, and, you know, I was just up there um, with with a friend of all of ours, Simon Mitchell. We were, we were just up diving there um, a couple of weekends ago, and and um, my goodness, it just uh, like you know we we do you know 70, 80 meter dive, um, and we've got these beautiful 
beautiful landscapes and big barrel sponges and and gorgonians and 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 black coral trees and all the rest of so so we got we got lots of fish and you know um we got plenty of wrecks um which obviously we all like um and uh, and so yeah so um in fact in in in, in uh, about four and a bit weeks um i go back to niagara so you know it's it's um you know Niagara is, is uh, she's an ocean liner that was, uh, had a, a, a 12 ton of gold bullion on her. Um, and uh, she, she was sunk by a German uh, mine, which was laid by a, a German Black Raider in, um, in uh, 1944. And um, so we're looking forward to go back to, we dived her first in 2000 and uh, she's sitting at about 125 meters. And, and um, but um, she's, most of all of her gold was salvaged um, due to an incredible story. Um, and that is a whole evening. <laughs> and I don't know how we're going to do it, but but you guys are going to have a few cheeky shirazes. It's an incredible story, but but that's not that's not, that's not for today. So but, I'm um, right in thinking, Pete, that a lot of these wrecks around New Zealand, you were probably the first one to dive on them. If it's uh, if if diving was sort of in its infancy when you got there, um, you must have been the first to dive on a lot of these wrecks that are there. Um, I found a few, but um, you know, there's, there's, um, man, I'll tell you what. There's, we, like, the, the the cool thing about New Zealand is that um, we've got some of the most incredible um, uh, divers here, and these guys are all under the radar. These guy and these guys are absolute wreck fanatics, and they don't go on Facebook. They don't, they don't bloody bloody blah 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 like all of us do. You know, we're all. <laughs> Like, like all, all uh, uh, soft promoters to the nth degree, and and we all we all like the sound of our own voice. These guys, none of that. They're just like, and they they um they just go out looking for things. And and um and it was down when I was down in Wellington on um uh, while I was working on 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 film set where where I, I met um uh, a, a a guy called uh, Willie Bullock, and and um he is um he's kind of like um. He's like a local legend, and um, he's been explained as basically when Willie gets in the water, he's a coolant to four guys. So he's a worker, man. He's like, and and, he, and, and this guy has a nose for brass, and he he goes, <laughs> and he will he will sit there and he will <laughs> and he will dig and he and and like I said, you know, he, he will he will work as if he was the equivalent of four men. And, uh, and I met him, and, and I met him around his house, and, and I'll send you some pictures of Willie. You know, this house is a shrine. It's awesome. It's, it's got spidge and gold and sovereigns and and brass and bells and stuff which would 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 make the the a grown man salivate and um probably maybe feels just slightly aroused you know <laughs> oh man and and we you know it just and and these are the sort of guys that that i just love and, and he's 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 getting on a bit you know he's like us always there's there's more there's more salt than pepper you know and um but he's, um, you know, and 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 those are sort of guys that I'm I'm really enjoying at the moment um, to to uh, to catch up with them and and um, and hear all their stories. But um, there's there's plenty of wrecks in New Zealand, you know. Is, is wreck diving your passion then? Because obviously, look behind Craig, you've got the Pete Mesley shock and awe and anim big animal diving. Um, for me, even though I've got a wreck diving T-shirt on, it's all about the wildlife for me. Um, and so I'd be more interested in in Pete Mesley shock and all um, rather than the Rex. But what what is it for you, or is it, or can't you pick one? Mate, I just I just love being in the water. Eh? I just I, you know I just um, and I, it, it's kind of like you know it's just building a brand. And and um, so at the beginning, I just um, I started with my lust for rust and and. And then we're wreck fanatics. We all like you know we 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 love the smell of, of bunker oil in the morning, <laughs> you know. And and um and that's amazing. But but I also um I just just love being in the water and 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 um my, you know big animals. And so of course you know um uh, so I just try to get you know I, you know been been focusing very hard on lust for us for the last um eighteen years. And I thought, well, you know, 
uh, shock and awe. I've been I've been running I've been running big animal trips for years now, and and it's 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 been under the radar. And I thought, well, I can't take someone on a on a Las Vegas trip to the Galapagos, you know, like it just just sounds wrong. You know, it's like taking a vegan to uh, the best steak restaurant in town. It's it's it just doesn't work, does it? So so that's when I, I, I sort of like it's all it's all bollocks, really. You know, um, it's all brandy and all the rest of it. But but um, in short of it, and in essence, I just I just love being in the water, and um, and in, in saying that, I um I you know for years people have been trying to get me to get into these wet rock sort of uh, places and 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 it kind of like ah you know like i can i can i can take him or leave him you know like and um but um i just um went over to mexico and um that's that's quite interesting stuff too so so it just it doesn't matter you know like i just i just like as long as you're getting wet then yeah your business pete must obviously be seriously affected now by by COVID, have you put all of that on hold? Obviously, you're not going to be going to truck or Solomon Islands or the Galapagos, as you just mentioned. Yeah, well, things kind of stopped dead in the water for me, really, didn't they? Yeah. <laughs> uh, but but you know what? Um, the cool thing about um, you know, I've got some some bloody awesome clients and good friends, and and like um, you know, when everything hit. I just just said to everyone, hey man, l listen, um, we all know what the story is. There's a lot of uncertainty. Um, you know, listen, man, if you're having problems with your with 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 feeding your kids and supporting your family, let me know and I'll I'll give you your money back, you know. Um, but what would be quite cool is 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 if you rebooked for the next trip, then that would kind of make you know make things a little bit easier for me and and uh, like you know, and, and the majority of people, like the vast percentage have said, look, just don't worry about it. Just um, just uh, put me on to the next trip. Look, we don't know what the hell's going on, but I'm coming out. And then there's some other people, um, you know, say, look, listen, man, I'm, I'm struggling a bit. And, and, and I understand that because, you know, we're, we're, we're all in the same boat. So so if, if I don't see them this year and I don't see them next year, I'll see them the year after. So, like, so then I'll just quite happily give them their money back and 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 um sure. and um you know what I mean? We 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 kind of we got to like no one knows what the hell's going on and um but we yeah. all need something to look forward to though. So so you know just knowing that you may be going on that trip next year is just to have something to hold on to. You know. Yeah. To yeah, I like hope. Hold on to hope. <laughs> so other yeah. than other than the trips, because obviously you can't do that, you are a dive instructor, a rebreather trainer, and you are managing to get some training done at the moment, I believe. Oh yeah, man. Like that's that's kind of my core business, you know, like um back in the day, like um for what it's worth, you know, I've been I've been teaching people to become instructors since two thousand and, and um and um and and that's just a, a very big passion for me because uh, you know teaching and and, and helping people all the rest of it uh, is is something that 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 holds very dear to me and and I, I've kind of let that lapse because of I've, I've I've been spending maybe twenty four to twenty five weeks a year away from home, so um, you know I'm building building my business and you know my, my wife she's a she's incredible you know like. Man, I'll tell you, the most trusting woman and, and, and most understanding woman in the world. All I've got to say is thanks, Raul, the pool guy. You've helped me out heaps, man. <laughs> so he comes to visit my wife every now and again, you know. I'm, yeah, I'm, only, I'm only joking. I'm only joking. But, but, um, but, um, but yeah, man, so like training, uh, just getting back into it now. So, so um, getting back into core, you know, to core things and, and, and I just love it. You know, we, we, we're doing heaps of um, advanced rec and, and rebreather stuff and, and, um, and some photographic workshops, which, which um, obviously photography is a, a, a very big um, passion of mine. And, and, um, and I just, and it's just it's just super awesome to try and um, uh, forward some of that that information and experience that I've had um, over the years to, to 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 other people to try and get some great great shots and you know and and um, and um, you know I've been I've been absolutely loving it you know it's been fun. 
I, I must admit that that uh, I, I love my underwater photography, and quite a lot of the people that listen to us do. Photography is growing and growing uh, for scuba divers. Now, what do you shoot with, Pete? We don't want to spend too long. It's not a photography lesson, but but are you, are you DSLR? Uh, DSLR? What what are you actually shooting with? He turns around. And he has his camera behind him. GoPro. It's the only camera you'll ever need. <laughs> you, you know what? Like I joke about that, but. But like, um, I, I'm shooting on a Nikon. There's only one camera in the world. It's Nikon. <laughs> and then I, I, it just, like, it doesn't really matter. Like I've, I've got a, a D850 um, and, a, and a Nordicam housing, and I'm very, very happy with that. But, but um, the cool thing is, is that, and, it, and one of the biggest things that I say in my photographic workshops is like, it doesn't matter, man. You know, like I used to think uh, when, I was a, when I was a kid, I used to look at people's images thinking, and I look, used to open these magazines thinking, oh my goodness, I'm never ever going to take pictures like that. And I thought, and then it took me a long time to think, stuff it. Take the pictures that you want to take, and, and, and you look at the shot and you go, yeah, man, I'm really happy with that shot. So that's, that's good you know, enough. whether you've got a GoPro, a, 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 a little film camera, a little Instamatic whatever or a camera which costs you more than your mortgage of your house um who cares and and, and this is the thing about photography and, and this is what brings me such joy and, and and it's just and you know and 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 just taking shots and taking pictures for yourself and and um and i think that's that's pretty awesome and and, yeah. and uh, i love it and, and and that's the whole thing too is it like whether you've got a gopro or whatever um, you, you take your pictures and, you, and, and then you, you look at the shots that you take and you go, or the video that you take, and you go, man, I'm really happy with that. Then that's really refreshing to hear. Uh, that, you, Pete? That's what it's about, man. It's yeah. it's memories and and like um, I've got a shocking memory. You know, like my memory sucks, um, and my kids tell me it every day of my life. You know, but but um, my um, the best thing for me is is I look I look at um, my Lightroom, my Lightroom is, is my photo album. And I, and, I, and I look on Lightroom and I'm going, oh my goodness. And I click on there and go, oh, wow, wow. I'd have forgotten about that. That was incredible. And, and, yeah. and that's, that's like, uh, that's pretty cool. And, and, and I do that maybe less than you at the moment. You know, but um, because you obviously you're in lockdown or, or, um, Craig, are you um? Have you blocked all of your website um, links so that we don't know what, what, what sites that you're looking at? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sharing my screen. I will tell you that. No. <laughs> I've just had a thought. We need to do a Pete Mesley photographic workshop on the dive line after a couple of bottles of Shiraz. <laughs> Hey, your photography is guaranteed to get better. It's hundred percent. All your money back. Oh, do you not pay? Yeah. Or we'll give you money. Yeah, but I, I can see that happening. We need to do a dive line and photographic workshop with Pete Maisley. Oh man! Uh, Any time you you rig it up, man. We'll we'll do it. And uh, but you you know what the only proviso is is it's afternoon evening my time. Yeah, <laughs> not a problem. <laughs> Yeah, I can I can make it like midnight my time, which will be like eleven o'clock in the morning your time, which will probably be better. But but you you might not get any coherency out of me. Yeah, yeah but then at least we can both have a beer or a shiraz. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> You've moved on from photography to videography and the three D imaging. This photogrammetry. Well, you're a, you're a photogrammetrist. So uh, let, yeah, let's let's just like explain that one right from the beginning, like. Um, I've um I've had um the thought in my mind for many many years about uh, creating a baseline of the Rex and Truck Lagoon. Just explain what you mean by a baseline. Just just okay. cover that. So 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 what we do is 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 if by creating a baseline. So now we we create a model of each wreck. All right. Um. So we create a a three D model of each wreck now. There's a lot of stories about how many wrecks are. There's about 32 wrecks in truck which are actually diveable, 
like you know like there's there's 60 wrecks there but but a lot of them are just piles of, of wreckage and all the rest of it. but there's like there's like 32 fully intact wrecks so the big thing there is 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 i want to create a baseline of of all of these wrecks because then once you've got a baseline then you know um what's happening um uh, and, and then, then like uh, people go at the moment there's people say oh there's a, a lot of oil threat and 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 and, and um, all the rest of it, and of course, like there probably certainly is, but um, that's like that's just one of the components of what these baseline modeling um, 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 models can do um, for um, you know for, for what I'm doing. Sorry, Pete, just to clarify what that oil threat is. These wrecks have been down there quite a long time um, since the war and, and beyond, and they've still got oil in and fuel in from when they sank. And as those wrecks deteriorate, there's a threat that oil could obviously come out of the wreck and potentially damage the environment. So that's that's just what the oil threat is. Is is that correct? Yeah, no, and I totally totally right there, mate. You know, like it, it's um and um mate, like. When I when I first went to truck in in, in two thousand and four, um, we like like the, a lot of these deeper wrecks. Like, lo, lo, lo and behold, to a lot of uh, uh, public perception, like uh, about ninety nine percent of all the diving in truck was recreational. You see, because like now the guys that go for a week holiday in truck and 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 there's like seventeen wrecks which are in recreational depths, right? 18 wrecks, which are in recreational depths. And these are all big ships, you know, five and a half thousand tonners, you know, like ocean liners and 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 and, and transporters and all the rest of it. So so like now they didn't like there wasn't any technical diving up until recently, the last maybe the last 15 years. And um so so with like and, and, and so so how I found we found this wreck called the Nagano um was looking for the oil slick. <laughs> Man, I'll tell you what, you can smell this on a on a on a on a hot sunny day and there's no wind, the stench of bunker oil on the surface was so these these wrecks have been leaking oil since nineteen forty four. You know, they've been they've been smashed up and all the rest of now and I'm not saying that there's not a threat. Now there's there's a lot of wrecks like a lot of tankers, all the rest of it, and and you know, people say the ones sitting upright are the least uh, problems because all the oil just leaks out of them. And the ones that are on the side, those are the biggest risks for upside down because all that oil is trapped in them. And 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 um and people are saying suddenly, oh, um, you know, the wrecks are suddenly deteriorating. Mate, listen, when you turn 76 years old, you're not just suddenly gonna deteriorate. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to get my fingers right. Yeah. <laughs> when you turn when you turn Craig's age, uh, you know things 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 like things have been starting to fall off for a while. You know, yeah. and, yeah. And, uh, yeah. and, uh, so 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 like now that didn't just it just didn't suddenly like fall apart. It's 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 taken a while. So so um, over the last five years, um, I've noticed a lot of change um in the wrecks and truck a lot of change and of course all the heavy stuff you know all the heavy guns all the rest of it have been sitting there especially if they're listing us an amount and then all that weight is just pulling down and stuff and then um so um you know all these things are just going to take their toll and it's right about from now uh, or five years ago for, and, and probably the next five years, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm not a, an, a, a, an engineer, so I, you know, I don't a, a marine engineer, so I don't know about these sort of things. But but things are things are falling apart a lot more. All the big things are starting to fall down, and um, so so um, so I really really wanted to to get a baseline um, and, and and to model these wrecks, and and like I. I didn't know what I was doing, and and so I um I contacted a mate of mine. His name is Marcus Blatchford, and he's he's a bloody good guy, you know. You know, you don't want to look at his uh, website uh, history, <laughs> but anyway, he's a good guy, a real good guy, a good friend of mine, and and 
and and I brought him in um, and to help me out, and and he kind of spearheaded the whole thing, and and he taught me because you know I don't know how to do it, and um, and I'm sick of like you know I've I've been disheartened for decades for trying to um, uh, get grants and money and all the rest of it, and I just thought ah stuff it, I'll just 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 get him over. Um, you know, and 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 we'll you know we'll just we'll just worry about paying for it later on, and uh, and we we did it like you know we've done we've done about eleven wrecks so far, and um and I'll I'll um I don't know can you can you share my screen? Yeah, I was um, thinking that, I was thinking to bring up mine, but I can share. Can you see yeah. that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. There we go. Okay, okay. So this is three D image there. Perfect. Okay. So can you see that? Yep. Awesome. Okay, so this is the wreck called the Amagasan Maru. All right, it's a four and a half thousand tonner um, passenger cargo vessel. And um, this is like, I wasn't really into 3D photogrammetry. I thought, oh, I, I, I'm going to need to get these modeling done. And I thought, look, um, you know, it just has to be done because I'm I'm more of one of those like arty farty instructors, uh, 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 photographers, right? So so I I like to take pictures which look nice, all the rest of it, and I just didn't think too much of the three D modeling, but I've had the most fun ever doing this, um, and it's probably more educational than anything. And so so that now so so here. This is the, the result, and and again, like now, there's no giveaways to how the ship sunk, is there? Big hole in the side. No, yeah. none of that. Yeah, that's Mr. Torpedo. Yeah, and he did a fantastic job of 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 doing the job, you know, doing the deal, you know, and um, and it's just the whole thing here just really um got me um hooked, and it, and it really got me um completely hook line and sink it in and, and i thought well this is this is just a fantastic um concept and and um so for example let me just is that the first one you did pete um no no it it wasn't the first one we did man and and um but um this is like number seven right because this this shot here that this this wreck I'll try to keep it moving because if people don't get bored. And how, um, how deep is this, Pete? Uh, this is 58 meters. You can zoom into these images as well. Goodness, look, you know, you can, you can, you can, you can, you can zoom right in. It's just, so, so, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you. So, so this is the cool thing about it. And this is where this baseline comes in. So look at the stern section here, right? Yeah. So, so um, I've got images of the, there was a stern gun, which which used to live here. Now there's a stern gun there, all right. Now yeah. what happened is that if you look over here, hold on, you can actually see the, um, the 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 stern section, the deck has pulled away from the main couplings over here because right? of the weight leaning on its correct, side. Right? Correct, mate. Exactly. And and again, so so like now we're a little bit late. Um, this only happened, so I've been uh, taking pictures, and, and I'll send you some shots of what this gun used to look like, and you'll understand um, um, how you know um, upset I was when it when, when it collapsed. But again, that's just the evolution of a ship, you know. Like it, it's just all of us getting older. Um, you know, all we got to do is just realize and understand that that's what's going to happen, and and um, and it, it just is what it is. Yeah, bits are bound to fall off. Exactly. So, so like now, um, now the, the 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 cool thing is that at least now we've actually got an image, um, a three D model baseline of the wreck. Now, obviously, it would have been better uh, twenty five years ago, where all these wrecks would have would have, you know they, they wouldn't have have had um, um, you know things falling off them at the moment. So you see that there's the bar gun, there's the bar gun there, you know. So. Um, so, so that that is still there, and all on the, on the pedestal there, that will eventually fall away and 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 disappear. Um, and um, so, 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 look, come on, like you know, I've I've dived a Magasan Maru here, I don't know, maybe seventy five times, wow. and I've never like you never see what the ship looks like, and and this is this is like the first time ever. 
why would you ever swim along a hull like this when there's all the super shocks to swim in? Um, so I never, ever swam along the hull here. And when I was modeling and I was helping um, uh, Marcus um, with, with all, all, all the, all the, the, uh, the, 3D, the 3D stuff, because obviously I was like his sous chef, you know, like I was just his, his bitch show, you know. Yeah. And um, and um, and he um, he was awesome, mate. He was just incredible. And yeah. I learned so much about these wrecks um, and just, just learning a little bit more about them every time. You can find all of these um, images, this image and loads more, on your website, which is petemesley.com. Um, yeah, you, you can. It, it's just just look on 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 on, on like Lust for Us or whatever, and then just 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 click on Truck Lagoon, and then there's the um, there's the wreck baseline. So so like now, can you still see that screen? Yeah, yeah. Can you see that? What? Can you see that? Yep. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Now this now this is the power of three D modeling. So have you got any idea what that is? It looks like the rockers on the top of the engine. Damn straight, man. You are a true British diver. All right. <laughs> um, so, so like now, um, 3D modeling isn't exactly only for the outside of Rex and all the rest of it. So, so this here is the inside of the port and starboard um, engine room wow. of the Rio de Janeiro Maru. And how cool it is, is that you can actually see all, all the, the stairwells and all the rest of it. So, um, and also, if you look into here, there's all the electric board. So let me see if, if I don't embarrass myself. I'll come up. Whilst you're doing that, Pete, let me ask you a question. Typically, how many images would make up? What, what Talk through the process of how this is done. Oh, mate, there's about 5,000, 5,500 images that make the Amagasan San Maru. So, so there's two... There's two um, major components in, involved in the um, in, in the process of photogrammetry, and you need to be a master at both of them. And, and of course, at the moment, I'm a master of none, um, and that's why I just get the right people to to help me out, you know. And um, Marcus's bitch. Yeah, exactly. And and um, you know, but but the, the cool thing is, is that um, so so the, the 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 imagery collection is the first one, and. Um, and the um, the processing is the second one. So so like now between the two, um, you know, you need to be a master of both. And 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 I'm trying to slowly learn. And and it's just it is a lot of fun. But but this just shows you what you can do. So in this on this dive here, how you get in now? now obviously, this is the the the, the engine room here. If you go into this hole here, this hatch here. It's actually not a hatch. It's a, it's a hole in the floor. But uh, she's lying hard on her starboard side. If you go into here, then you will actually go into this area here. And this wow. is the helm station. Look at this. The double helm. Now, come on. You, you, can't, crazy. you can't not be impressed by that. That is that is super cool. You got, you got your port and starboard or your, your, your port and starboard uh uh, uh, telegraphs there. You got your inclinometer here. You got your clock, and you got your alarm bells. All these sort of things. And and like now, um, this is just an example of what three D modeling can do. Um, now, obviously, at first we were going, oh man, we can we can do all inside the wrecks, and you can never get all the way through. But but uh, that kind of takes away the the whole purpose of why you're there to explore and all the rest of it. But it just shows you the tool and the mechanism that um that this 3d modeling can do obviously the key part of this as you just mentioned the second component is the software what about the the, the images though are these normal um normal cameras or a, spe a special type of camera to take those five thousand images no no it's just a normal camera mate um and um so so the thing is at the moment um what you've got is you've got you, what you've got to do is you've got to overlap each image at least 70%. You right. see, so right now the software will say, hey, listen, I know what you are. I know where you are. And it will do at least 40,000 dots where it'll say, I remember you. I remember you. You, you look familiar. So when you've got two pictures and they, and they overlap each other at least 70%, 
and then look at 40,000 points of, of, of collection of where it's going to join those images, to, those two images together. And then the next image has got 40,000 points in the next image. So that, they do that with, with five and a half thousand um, 50 megabyte images. Um, it's, there's, there's, there's a lot of, there's a, there's a lot of computer power needed, you see? Before you can even start on the software, I mean, how many dives does it take to get five and a half thousand images to the quality that you want? Are we talking, I mean, so many dives it must be. Mate, there's, the, 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 there's, a, there's a, a, a massive variance in that question, and that is an awesome question. But the, 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 the biggest answer to that is it all depends on visibility. So like now, um, if you've got 30 or 40 meters of visibility, then when you take a picture, and we're normally using like wide-angle lenses and fisheye lenses and all the rest, so when you take a picture, it sees a lot. So when you're looking at one meter visibility, then you have to get so close to the image um, yeah. that you'll need like so. So there's so it's the 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 better the visibility, the the less um, uh, the, the less dives or the less time that you need to to to, to put the model together. The right. worse the visibility, the more time and the more dives and the more um, heartache that you that you have. So like you know. Um, that, that you can, but, but look at this, man, this is, I, I just can't be, I just can't not be amazed every time. This is a wreck called the Oiti. Uh, it's a destroyer. Um, and obviously she got blown in half and here, here are the torpedo tubes and you wouldn't know that because you wouldn't be able to see, you can barely see, um, okay. You can see a dark image in the, in, like if you're at the, if you're at the midship chair, so that's a stern there. And then, and then there's the bar over here. So there's about maybe 30 meters distance between here. You see, 25, 30 meters. So, so having this model, look, you, you can't help but see and know and understand exactly what you're getting yourself into. And and this is just another example of of how awesome these models are. Absolutely. I mean, be, besides the baseline project and recording the state of the image, for somebody that's not dived on a particular wreck before, to be able to see oh. that sort of imagery before a dive and know what's where, I mean, incredible. I will just quickly say, for those people listening to us in, in pod land, in podcast land, I should say, head over to our YouTube channel because the images that Pete has been showing us are absolutely incredible. Uh, and as Jim mentioned, they, Fridge mentioned, they can all be seen on PeteMesley.com. Well, here we go. Look, let me just show, I'll share you my screen. <laughs> <laughs> so here we are. We've got PeteMesley.com. Um, we've got obviously Lust for Rust, um, which goes into all of these bits and pieces. Um, and here we go. The worldwide wreck, wrecks of the world. Um, that that Hellcat that you just flipped past, that I spent being being a, you know into my planes, I spent hours trying to manipulate it so I could see into the the cockpit. It's fantastic. But if you if you go to the website, there's just so much there, and it's got look at all these wrecks and and, and all the photogrammetry that you've taken of all these wrecks is is quite incredible. And of course, you can find out about the 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 shock and awe big animals um your training and obviously a little bit about you but we've already found out about um found out about you so yeah um head over to petemesley.com is what i'd say uh thanks for that uh, blatant plug mate i really appreciate it so so like you know so with all this it's just kind of like everything is like a tool in the way like craig what you mentioned about um you know like we, we, we've all been, we're all a bit long on the tooth now, so we'll be, we, we've all had a few wrecks um, under our belt now. And can you imagine, like, you, I, I've never, and I've been in some pretty good visibility um, um, destinations in the world, I've never, ever um, seen a wreck in its entire, well, I kind of have one or two, but it's, it's very rare that you'll see a wreck in its entirety. And to be able to have this model where you can go, Okay, well, fair enough. So if I swim over there, I should see this. And, and, and the, the tool for for helping people understand how she's sitting in the water is it's just incredible. It it really is incredible. And and um 
and and that's just one of the one of the the, the many um, components of that. And and um, so when I like I first started to get into it, like okay, it's just truck lagoon wrecks. And then I thought, you know what? There's people around the world who are are, are doing the photogrammetry. The, the photogrammetry is you know is 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 being done in pockets. I thought, how cool would it be if we could all bring everything together? And we can all share um, the love of, of 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 shipwrecks and 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 all the rest of it, and and um, and to try and bring it all into one place. Like this isn't this isn't kind of like a money making thing or nothing. You know, like, no one cares. About, you know, we all have to earn a living, and we all got to feed our kids. And blah, blah 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 blah. But again, like how cool would that be? Is if we just came to one place and 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 everyone brought in their images and their models and to say, well, hey, listen, man. Um, are we going to uh, Cornwall for the weekend? And the guys go, oh, what's that? And they click on the, and then they go, oh man, there's all these wrecks. And, and, and okay, um, the, the, the challenges of, of, of getting the world's 3D models, um, um, you know, all, all 3D models um, together in one place, let alone having the model created in itself is, 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 is huge. But, but if we just do like one step at a time and, and then before we know it, We'll have 10 wrecks, we'll have 20 wrecks, we'll have 50 wrecks, we'll have 100 wrecks, we'll have 500 wrecks, we'll have 1,000 wrecks. And, and then um, it will be, it will be, I just think it'll be, it'll be pretty cool. So, so um, I'm sort of at the moment, I'm still focusing on feeding my kids and, and all this. So once, once, uh, you know, what, Pete, I, I, like I said before, I, I'm not a big wreck person, to be honest. I like the wildlife, but I spent hours on your website looking at those images. Because yeah. how can, like you said, how can you not be impressed by them? Pete, Pete photography has become so popular. How feasible is it for just a normal recreational diver to be able to photograph his favourite wreck in his favourite area down in Cornwall or wherever that may be, and then stockpile those images into a central point? Is that is that what you're thinking for for how people can contribute? Yeah. Yeah. Um exactly um and the thing is like now is 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 that you can still you you can you can also do video so i just i uh, helped out a mate um and he um he videoed a corsair in um a plane in uh in the solomons and I, Love yeah, it. yeah and um and 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 i said look what have you got he goes he goes i've got some videos so i said and 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 this guy is 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 the most experienced guy on his, history in, in the songs. Guy's name is Ewan Stevenson. He's a lovely guy, and um, and I said, "Well, send a video." And, and of course, he videoed this thing like you should do, um, and and because he was trying to document everything, so he was very careful about going over every single component. And I I made this 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 model of this Corsair for him, and and it was uh, it was all from video. And you can, because you can get all screen grabs from the video. It's not, it's not as high resolution as a 50 megabyte image. But all I'm saying is that you can strap on your GoPro, and you can. Um, the only thing is, is that the only stipulation is that you need to overlap the images, and that's that. That's quite hard to do, and yeah. because then if you have this gap, then then things don't kind of match up on the on the software. But if you video it, if you video it. And you basically go up round and you just do it four or five times and you two and a half times the information we can get and gather that information and make something from it. And, and, um, and, um, and then in the future, you see uh, the technology of the software, you won't need 70% anymore. You'll need 30%. Mm. See, and then, then, then it's, it's, you know, I, I didn't think that I would, I would, I would be so I excited about it. You know, because like I said, you know, like I, I like taking like high art pictures. You know, arty farty shit. You know, like light a bit there and drop a light there and paint a bit of light there and all that sort of rubbish. But, but, um, but th th these wrecks, like, there's certainly a place for these models in the world. And, um, and, um, you know. Um, and, and a friend of mine um, that, that we go diving regularly with, uh, maybe, you know, do you know Karen Hatton? He also, he is a prolific um, 3D, 3D photog photogrammetryist, whatever the word is. And and, um, and the thing is that now, the more that people put things together, 
um, and can do is is just I, I just think that that you know just just one wreck at a time, you know. And and when you start playing with the imagery, I I, I noticed that I had to turn down the sensitivity of my mouse because I was just spinning wrecks all over the place. And once I'd worked out how to manipulate my mouse and, and using the zoom, uh, as Fris just said, I spent hours looking through some of those images on PeteMesley.com. Incredible. Just fantastic. And so interesting. Oh, th oh thanks. Man. And, and um, so, um, so obviously, you know, all of this is, if, if anyone wants to help out, you know, like, um, the, the the key is is um you know i guess it's like with everything else it's just dollars isn't it you know but we got some we got some pretty cool stuff here like an, big animal stuff you know well, you've got great whites there haven't you oh yeah yeah someone just got bitten uh in uh, yeah uh, about a month and a half ago did you see yeah, that? You that on the surface yeah yeah um yeah. So I'd, I'd take uh, I take uh, trips down to to do the uh, like go, go and um, we do we do a great white shark diving down in, in Stewart Island, which is so if you've got the North Island and the South Island, and then Stewart Island is the there's a little island just um, it's not very little it's quite a big island but it's on the bottom of the South Island and that's one of the the highest congregations of the great whites, and they're there at the moment and they're there until May. Um, like they're from from December to May, and is that cage? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'd have, you'd have to be an idiot to to try and free swim with grey whites. Like, if you get bitten, like, don't come crying to me. You know, like, it's it's. it's I just like, love to do that. Have a camera in the cage and get some shots mate, of some great whites. It's just I. I oh, had such a lot of fun, and, and you know, and, and the guys go. We, we do a couple of days doing that, and I thought, oh, you know, I'll just get bored. But and then, you just never get bored of these beautiful, beautiful creatures. And and they, we had like three females, and uh, they are six meters. These things are big fish, man. Do you get do you get many wild and varieties of whales out there? We get all sorts, like you know, like um, orca. Um, and minkies, and minky whales, and 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 um, like like it's quite a rare whale, the southern right whale, but that comes further south. Um, and 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 humpbacks, we don't like humpbacks come, to, but they're not like a like come February. You'll see the humpbacks, you know, not like Tonga and 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 Niue and 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 New Cal and all the rest of it, you know. But um, but we we are very blessed with with what we got, and we're very lucky. To um to actually go outside the house and not be shot down on the street for doing that, you know. So um yeah, man. I hope you guys um you know I hope everyone's staying safe and and um the, the vaccine's being rolled out. The situation is changing. We can only be optimistic. You know, we're all glass half full people, and it's frustrating being locked down, but. As we said earlier, all we can do is look forward to dive trips that are planned, look forward to getting back in the water, look forward to some traveling. Um, you know, that's that's all we can do at the moment. But but things are improving. Yeah. And, and, and like, you know, one thing that I've noticed is that, um, that, that there, there were two responses for people. One is that they just dig a hole and they just like hide in the hole. But in the other response, the guys go, man, look, look. What's what's next tomorrow? The zombie apocalypse. So we might as well just enjoy ourselves now. And and so so what have we got going? And 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 so um, I think once you know this this uh, COVID thing is is sorted out and people are uh, you know vaccinated and and all the rest of it, then and it's going to take it's going to take the airlines a, a couple of years to figure themselves out because like now you know if, you know we're all crying and moaning about oh i had to travel like 34 hours uh, and three flights but then when there's not when there's two flights a week to these places and then suddenly it's going to take you like four days to get to or six days to get to the places then you start thinking you know what the times back in the day weren't too bad at all so i think there's going to be a lot of adjustment and and um we just man we just gotta uh, we're all adaptive, aren't we? You know, and and um and I just all I ca I just can't wait to get diving with you guys and um all my mates and 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 get get up diving and get some new friends and 
and and um, just just get up there and it's all the banter and and um, it's what we love, you know, and and um, and and it's it's at the end of the day whether whether you you're stuck at home and and you 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 you, you your eyes are sore from sitting in a seat watching Netflix, you know, and it's just you're just biding a time and and um. And it would just like those days will be over soon, and, and we'll just get back into it and, and get sorted out, too. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So before you go, Pete, um, and before we sort of wind this first chat up, um, because I'm sure we'll chat again, um, just tell us a little bit about Avatar, because obviously that was filmed out in New Zealand, um, in your in your back garden, and um obviously you were involved in that just tell us a bit ha about how you got involved with it really oh mate um it's just um i've got to be careful because i signed an nda so uh so i uh, so i'm, I'm probably going to get uh hold on uh, oh sorry no i can't talk about it <laughs> i can't tell you <laughs> oh, but, mate, i'll tell you um it's it's probably like you know anything that jim cameron's involved in you know that 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 it's going to be Oh, for awesome, you know, mm -hmm. and um, and I played an extremely small role, and and um, and like um, and a, a man of mine, uh, his name is John Garvin, and and he um, and he's in charge of all the diving operations, and and uh, and he says, look, I've got this, and and he came to me Oztec um, a few years ago, and he goes, oh, I've got this project, and and all the rest of it, and and I really want you to be a part of it, and I, ah, oh, sweet, he goes, but I can't tell you anything about it, I went, oh, okay, just, just let me know when you can, and, you know, like, you know, like, and, and, and anyway, so, long story short is, um, so I ended up, um, um, down in uh, Wellington, and, and, um, like, Jim Cameron, like, I, I think he lives here most of the time now, I think he, between him and Shania Twain, they own, I think the whole of New Zealand. Um, so I think I think the taxes that I pay go to Jim Cameron. <laughs> I don't know, but but um, maybe the South Island. I don't know, but but um, but yeah, it was just super awesome, mate. You know, like um, they've um, so the so what were you like a safety diver? Uh, okay, so 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 originally I would, I, that, that would be the first thing i do but but my role was um underwater camera assist so um so basically it sounds awesome but but i was um basically um uh, a bitch boy to um to the dop and this guy is an incredible an incredible um cinematographer and uh and uh, and and just being around this guy was was amazing and and uh, and and i spent um you know um uh, you know, I think we spent like three or four weeks on set, and um, and and uh, we got these three D cameras, and um, they they have to be craned into the water, um, and they're just just incredible pieces of equipment, and the inertia of this, and like obviously we we, we we've stabilized them, to, to, so they 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 they're, they're totally neutrally buoyant in the water, but they're all got um, big, big umbilicals to the surface, and you got the three D team, and and um, there's that the whole just like being a part of um so in the pool so like the pool is this big uh two million liter um uh tank which is like five and a half meters deep 15 meters wide big big like it's like a petrol container like it's a, it's a portable um a water tank and then they just put this thing up on set and there'll be like 30 people in the water and there's like 300 people around um, um around around the, the 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 side of the pool and um, and it was just an incredible, an incredible environment um, to 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 actually just play such a small role in where where we, we um, and 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 like I don't know whether you know, but there's 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 five avatars. Um, so the first one, can you remember when the first one went out? Ten years ago, mate. Ten years, avatars been out. So so um, um, so there's so there's there's. Uh, Two and three have are, are being filmed. And I think they're, they're they're finishing the 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 top side stuff off and all the rest. Of it. But but the whole stuff is being filmed underwater. The whole the whole concept is underwater. And um, and of course, when you got Jim Cameron, who's this guy is passionate about the water underwater world. He just loves his wrecks and he just loves his fish life and all the rest of it. You'll see and. And um, we only saw a very small snippet of 
of the 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 the, the actual um, uh, 3D imagery and all the rest of it, and it'll blow your brain out. It's incredible. And 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 again, um, you know, we're all like everything being filmed underwater. Like Jim, he, like he doesn't take 99%. As, as he's not happy with 99%. He wants it 100% all the time. And um, and that is, that's fairly tough on us, you know, because we're in the water 12, 14 hours a day. Um, uh, and um, and that's, that's, that's hard work, you know. And, and you've got, you got all these, these actors, and they're all sort of like being like – they're all like um, pre-breathing nitrox, um, <laughs> high amounts of oxygen so they can sit there and they can do the scenes – um, and and be be holding their breath for like two or three minutes um, yeah. underwater, and um, so obviously um, me being behind the camera. So like now, um, what I'd do is 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 I was I'd be the the uh, being the camera assist. I'd I'd be uh, holding onto on, onto the line so 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 uh, Pete Zuccarini would would have a scene where he would go he would go through, uh, you know, like once you've set the scene up, all the lighting would come around and and there'd be like. 50 poles, there'd be trellises, there'd be <laughs> shit in the water everywhere. And 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 he would be filming and I'd just make sure that he wouldn't get, get caught up in anything. And then and then um and then once they'd find the frame, they'd lock in the frame for, for lighting that shot, then I'd hold the hold the camera and make sure that the, the lighting guys could see where the um where the camera goes. So it was it was awesome. Like uh, uh, yeah. Kate Winslet tweeted a couple of pictures and and said about having to hold her breath for uh, at one point she said four minutes that she had to hold her breath for which seems a long time for uh, you know not a free diver but uh, uh, but some of the images that she tweeted I, I thought oh NDAs I wonder if she's allowed but but uh, yeah that was quite incredible man I'll tell you what um, she kicked most of the stunties as ass you know um, <laughs> uh, and, um, and 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 like it's just the, the, the big thing is, you know, like, um, and it's just witnessing all of that sort of stuff going on and, and um, is, um, is, it was really something quite special. And, and uh, you know, it, it was, it was, it was the longest I've ever spent in a pool in my life. And I'm probably, you know, <laughs> I'm quite glad to get to the ocean, but, um, but um, yeah, the crew were just incredible. A hell of an experience and something to tell the grandchildren at least, isn't it? Yeah, and and um, there's four and five, so you know, uh, and, and then so hopefully I'll get I'll get asked back. Um, I, I don't mind being someone's bitch, and I, I, I honestly, I don't mind being a sous chef. I don't mind like carrying someone's bags, and and um, and it was it was it was it was a lot of fun, uh, very hard, you know. But um, Pete, does the bitch need a bitch? <laughs> well, you know what? It so happens. That, yeah, I do. Yeah, <laughs> I do. Can I volunteer to be your bitch? You can. Yeah, <laughs> it's awesome. You can't you, like, just just come on over. Um, your 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 professional training will start uh, a year from when filming starts, and then and then we'll see how you get on. And then uh, and then if you if you make the cut, uh, and um, you fulfil all of my wants and desires. <laughs> right, yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, yeah. look, Pete, I mean, like we say to everybody, we could talk for hours and, yeah. and I really hope we can catch up again and, and chat again and, you know, tell us this story about the, the wreck and the gold bullion and, um, oh, you know, maybe do a, a photo workshop or something. You know, it's just great talking to people like you and having fun with people like you. We've I wish we could do it for real. Yeah, yeah, and, and we, we will, man. And and um, anytime you just let me know, and um, like that's you know you know what my only proviso is, bottle of Shiraz, Chavez. Yeah, man. <laughs> and like I, I really I really enjoyed tonight, you know, or today this morning uh, to chat with you guys, and and um, I'm, I'm, I'm hopefully that the people that uh, that are listening on the podcast, uh, w it wasn't uh, too uh, too bad, but. Uh, yeah, like the video is a little bit better because <laughs> you can see faces. But but um, anyway, it was a lot of fun for me. Thanks a lot for inviting me on there, guys. We really appreciate it. Thank you very much, Pete. I'm just uh, pleased we got around to it at last. It's been several months in the making, really, hasn't it? 
Yeah, it is, mate. It is. And it's, it's my absolute pleasure. And, and uh, I just like, you know, for, for everyone, just like keep the faith, you know, don't sell your kit. Um, just, man, just get back into it, whether it's back to Stony, it doesn't matter, man. Just get in the water um, and um, just 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 get your club back together again. You know, the, the, just it's going to take a, a, a little bit of work, you know, but I'm sure with all the passion that's there um, and, um, you know, we, we all need a, a giddy-up. And, and if everyone's together and they give each other a giddy up and they give each other a slap on the ear, and, oh, I don't think I'm going to come on Diamond this weekend. <laughs> they give a slap on the ear and they go, come on, you're coming. And then, you know, and um, and the easiest thing in the world is to say yes. And then after that, um, then then that's it, you know. So uh, hopefully you guys will, will come out of your lockdown soon. And I, um, I just, you know, I, I hope that everyone stays safe and stay well. And... Um, Let's get back to doing what we do best, eh?